sorry, there's sirens in my background, just ignore that. Um, how has precision medicine come of age in the last few years? And in particular, how has it been used to treat cancer? Well, so, you know, as I said, I've written before about this. I, I am, I, I have some sobriety about precision medicine. Um, and my sobriety is, uh, and I'll tell you exactly what my sobriety is. Um, in the 1990s and early 2000s, when we sequenced um, cancer genomes and human genomes, we, I think some of us um, optimists, had thought that out of the genome, just by the genetic sequence, and perhaps by the understanding the expression of genes in cancer cells, that we would sort of the therapies would fall out of it. Um, in other words, there would be a kind of, you know, uh, you know, cancer, cancer is X, the therapy is Y, um, and so forth. That has worked for some cancers, spectacularly for cancers such as some breast cancers. Um, I heard the conversation about her two and her septin. Um, uh, it has worked for some leukemias such as chronic myelogenous leukemia, some lung cancers. But the, so, so that's, that's the optimistic part of it. The sobriety in this is that for most cancers, um, the genetic sequence of the cancer and our understanding of you know, what the cancer expresses in terms of its proteins has not led thus far to a, a panoply, as it were, of medicines that we can use for that particular cancer that would solve the problem. Um, and that's been a very sobering um, message because we had thought that that would be the case. Um, in, in the disease that I treat, uh, uh, which is a precancerous uh, syndrome called myelodysplastic syndrome or, uh, and also acute myelogenous leukemia, you know, I can send sequencing and I can, you know, I get lots of sequencing data back. The, uh, the data from the sequencing from the genome and from the understanding of the cancer, what the cancer expresses, marginally, and this is very important, only marginally affects what I use as treatment for the for that cancer. I'm still using drugs that were used in the 1970s and 1980s to treat a cancer in 2021. Now that's not true for breast cancer. That is not true for some kinds of lung cancer. So there is a very vast degree of heterogeneity in our ability to go from information that the cancer provides to the specific drugs that the cancer can, uh, can respond to. One last point is that I'm particularly interested in uh, prevention precision therapeutics. So in other words, can we um, use all the various mechanisms that we have now, um, uh, scans, blood tests, et cetera, et cetera, to prevent cancers uh, in their earliest stages or to catch cancer in their earliest stages and thereby use uh, precision medicine. It's almost always the case that in advanced cancers, um, we've been not so lucky in, in, in doing the kind of precision medicine that we had hoped to do. But in early cancers, um, we really get a lot of effect. And the real hope is to find these early cancers using a variety of mechanisms and eradicate them so that we can really um, bring the power of precision medicine. So precision medicine is really tied with um, the, de is, uh, the detection of early cancers as much as we can uh, get them.